Since the pandemic, the whole world's been thinking about how best to fight infection. And two cell types in particular have become immunity celebrities. T cells are equipped with missiles that they can basically fire into those cells and destroy them. We have millions of B cells. They stimulate T cell immunity. B cells are part of our antibody mediated immunity. It's hard these days to find someone who hasn't heard of T and B cells, I think. But it wasn't always like this. Criticism came from Bill Morris, who said B and T cells represent the first and last letter of the word bullshit. So how did Jack and Max solve the puzzle of the B and T cells? I had two sisters, and Jacqueline contracted tuberculosis. In those days, there was no cure, and she died December 1940. I heard the doctor tell my mother, we don't understand anything about infectious disease, no idea what happens. Because we can't kill all the bacteria, the ordinary bacteria, and we can't kill any of the viruses. And the viruses are very important. They give us measles, polio, flu, and smallpox, and a lot of other things. And, uh, well, we can't touch them at all. So I thought that was interesting. So that, that was one of the reasons I thought maybe I'd do medicine. Jacques' curiosity led him to pursue a career in the emerging field of immunology. Scientists knew about the existence of antibodies molecules that neutralize pathogens such as viruses. Antibodies, which prevent germs from harming you. And that there were some immune cells called lymphocytes. Whilst it was clear that these cells were important, no one knew where they came from, what exactly they did, or why some people's immune systems could adapt to fight disease, and others couldn't. During his early research into a leukemia-causing virus in mice, he became intrigued by one forgotten piece of the puzzle, an organ called the thymus. I was told that it is a non-functional organ and was just a graveyard for dying lymphocytes. There were some lymphocytes in the thymus, but they weren't made there. And when adult mice had their thymus removed, when they were thymectomized, nothing happened. Even Sir Peter Medawa, who had the Nobel Prize, said as late as 1963, and I quote, we shall come to regard lymphocytes in the thymus as an evolutionary accident of no very great significance. But Jacques was beginning to see some connections between the health of his mice and the health of the thymus. The leukemia virus starts causing changes, mutation, in some thymus cells. And the thymus becomes cancerous and spreads to other tissues so that you get leukemia. So I want to know more about this organ. Scientists had already confirmed that nothing much happened if a thymus was removed from an adult. But what about if there was no thymus from birth? Jacques thought that question might help him solve the thymus puzzle. How do I test it? I take out the thymus of newborn mice and then wait, say, four weeks and then put a newborn thymus back as a graft and see if these mice get leukemia when you inject them with virus. When they were about four, five, six weeks old, they started wasting. Why are they wasting? Some of them died. And I saw they had less lymphocytes in the circulation, less lymphocytes in the lymphoid structures like lymph nodes and spleen than normal mice. Removing the thymus did stop the mice from developing leukemia, but the rest of their immune system began falling apart. What was happening with the thymus? Why was this organ previously believed to be useless so important? And why was removing it early in life making the mice sick? So I thought, 
maybe these mice, which have been Samek mice at birth, cannot induce a proper immune response. How am I going to test this? Well, one way to test it was to graft skin from mice of a different strain. One of a healthy immune system's core functions is to reject foreign objects, and that includes things like skin grafts. They should reject it. Normal mice reject it in 10 days. Neonatally cymect mice never, never rejected them. I had four different grafts on these neonatally cymect mice, mice of different colors. They look like a patchwork print. Without a thymus, something in the juvenile's immune system had changed. And it's a direct result of my work on leukemia that discovered the function of the thymus. The thymus is educating stem cells to become lymphocytes. It's educating them like a school. And these specialized lymphocytes, educated in the thymus, became known as T cells. We now know that these specialized T lymphocytes are central to our entire adaptive immune system. And without them, Jacques' young mice could not fight off infection or learn to recognize and reject foreign skin grafts. It was a big discovery, but there were many questions remaining. Although the thymus seemed to help the lymphocytes specialize, it didn't produce them in the first place. So where did they come from? To answer that, we would need the help of a different animal. At Ohio State University, Bruce Glick had been removing another mystery organ, called the bursa of Fabricius, from chickens as part of his research on sexual development. But a colleague came by and asked for some of his chickens to demonstrate antibody production. He came back later with a uh, complaint, Bruce, you spoiled my experiments. Lots of your chickens didn't make antibodies. The lack of antibodies in these chickens suggested a serious fault in their immune system. But Max hadn't initially thought that the bursa was relevant to immunity. Max recalled Jack's work and devised his own experiment to see if he could finally figure out the different roles of the bursa and the thymus in immune cell production. I chose to use whole body irradiation and then remove the thymus or the bursa or both or neither and let them grow up and recover. And when the results started coming up, I burned more adrenaline in that week than I had burned in any year, I think, before in my life. And the results were absolutely clear cut. Removing the thymus did not stop antibody production, but removing the bursa did. The bursa's job was to make lymphocytes, some of which go for training at the immune school in the thymus, becoming T cells, and some of which remain in the blood as B cells, producing antibodies. If you remove the thymus, you destroy the immune school, stopping lymphocytes from becoming T cells and learning how to fight infection. The B cells are still produced without a thymus, but become much less effective without their specialized T cell colleagues to help them. It was the first proof that there were two different types of adaptive immune cells, and understanding how B and T cells work together to fight diseases would be the launch of some of the most vital advances of the biomedical sciences. That idea that there were two lineages of cells changed everything we were thinking about at that point in immunology. It meant that we uh, had to find out how T cells help B cells and to do their antibody responses in an optimal way. How does this affect the development of immunodeficiency diseases? Where is a bursa equivalent in mammals like us? And the bursa equivalent in humans, the place where these cells were being produced, would turn out to be the bone marrow. B fits both bursa and bone marrow. The T fits thymus derived. So what was going on? Obviously, there must have been a collaboration between T cells and bone marrow derived cells called B cells. But people didn't like that. Why didn't they like that? They said they circulate in the blood and in the lymph. How would they ever find each other? It's not uh, logical. 
But of course, we didn't know at the time that cells produce what we call lymphokines or cytokines, which are kind of messages to talk to each other. Knowing where these cells were trained and that they collaborated to give us adaptive immunity was the first step in understanding how we might tweak the immune response ourselves. Scientists could start to tackle diseases from two new angles, even giving us ways to fight viruses that no human had experienced before. It's getting almost everybody's attention <laughs> these days with the uh, COVID pandemic, for example. Antibodies disappear after a certain time, but the T cells see the inside of the virus. It translates into new ways of treating cancers. It translates into leukemias and other kinds of malignancies. Autoimmune disease, immunodeficiency disease, even pregnancy, even wound repair, T cells have a role. It's hard to imagine modern science without the brilliant B and T cells. And the most exciting part is what we might be able to do with them next, as future developments and advances offer further and deeper understanding that may revolutionise the treatment of disease. Jacques Miller may be the last person to discover the function of a human organ, but there are many other puzzles to be solved in understanding ourselves, our bodies, and what keeps us healthy, if we just stay curious enough. People think I'm dead. I mean, I'm 91 years old. So I should be dead. My statistics, when they talk about TNB cells, they have no idea that these cells were discovered in last century. They have no idea. The same with the thymus. It's a very sophisticated organ. It's only been there since 1961.